So you're trying to get your personal finances together and you're trying to manage your money in the best possible way. You're trying to save money and you're trying to invest and you're following all the personal finance rules that you read in the books or that you watch in YouTube videos and they're probably not working for you. And the reason why they're not working for you is because some of the advice that you're getting in these books and watching in these videos is just not practical and some of these personal finance rules are just myths. So in this video, I'm going to be going over 10 popular personal finance rules or popular advice points in personal finance, which are actually not practical for everyone. And these are just myths and you're probably better off not following them. So before I tell you about all these personal finance myths that will probably never ever help you, just a quick reminder here, welcome back to the channel if you're already a subscriber. And if you're new here, my name is Ian and on this channel, I post videos on topics related to personal finance, on making money, investing money, saving money, side hustles, side gigs, and anything related to personal finance. So if you like these videos and these topics, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to the channel and turning on all notifications. And that way you'll be able to get the updates every day when I post a new video on this channel. Now, the first myth that I want to talk about today is the myth that you must purchase and own your own home. Now, owning a home is a very good feeling. However, it's not for everyone, but yet it's still being pushed as the primary goal where in life everyone should just purchase a home. Now, many people also look at homes as investments and they can be, but oftentimes your home is not an investment. It's just a place to live. Now, a couple months ago, I was doing the numbers and I was doing some math and I was trying to figure out how much I would benefit if I purchased a house. Now, when I did the math, I realized that if I took a regular 30 year conventional loan mortgage and I went in with, let's say 3% down, which is probably what the average person will do, it's going to take me almost 20 years, which is two decades to see any returns on my investments. And I'll tell you why. You have to come up with a down payment. You have to come up with the closing costs. You also have some other miscellaneous costs, such as doing a home valuation, doing inspections and other costs. So after paying all these costs up front, you wouldn't be able to break even unless you kept that house for at least three to five years and three years if the property appreciated a lot and five years if the property appreciated by the normal rate of appreciation. Now, in addition to that, the interest payments that you would pay earlier on or in the early years of your mortgage, specifically in the first 15 years of your mortgage, are going to be so much that by the time you get to year 15, the amount of money you spent on interest payments minus the appreciation that the property has experienced still probably won't even break even to the amount that you actually paid for the house. In fact, after 30 years, even though the property has appreciated and gained value or gained more value, the amount of interest that you paid on the loan over those 30 years is usually going to be equivalent to one and a half to two times the cost of the house. So think about this. You spent $10,000 upfront for a down payment, closing costs and other fees. Let's say you have a mortgage of $1,000 per month. Shockingly, probably only $200 to $300 of that $1,000 per month mortgage payment is going towards the principal of that home. The other $700 to $800 is just interest payments and possibly insurance. If the house is worth $350,000, in 30 years from now, by just looking at that, you'd say, well, the house has appreciated by $150,000 and I've made a very good investment. But in reality, over the past 30 years, you spent a total of $400 or $450,000 in paying for this home because of the amount of interest you paid over those 30 years. So when you actually do the full math here, you'll realize that that home that you're planning to purchase, that you're looking at and you're saying, well, it's going to be a very good investment and it's going to make me a lot of money. In 30 years from now, you're still going to lose money. So a home is probably just the place to live in most cases and not really a good investment. Now, with this said, I don't believe that anyone should be pressured into purchasing a home or that should actually be a financial goal for everyone. And this just really depends on your lifestyle and what you want to do with your life. Maybe you like traveling, maybe you want to travel the country or maybe you want to travel the world. 
Maybe that's your ultimate goal in life. And if that's the case, then purchasing a home should not be on your list and you shouldn't feel pressured to follow the personal finance rule, which says that you need to purchase or own your own home. Maybe you'll even be better off renting and living in different cities and moving along when you feel the need to. So with that said, be sure to, whenever you plan to purchase a home, do the full math. Think about all the interest payments that you'll make over 30 years or a 30 year period. And also look at how properties appreciate in that area over the decades. And you'll have a very good idea off if you're actually making a good investment or if you're just buying a house to live in. Now, the second personal finance myth is that debt is bad. So I'm sure you've heard this advice before, which is to stay away from debt completely. Now, you'll hear that you shouldn't get yourself into any credit card debt, student loans, personal loans, don't take out a car loan. Some people even recommend that you don't even use a mortgage, which is just not practical for the average person. Now, this is actually some good advice. You should definitely stay away from debt, but this is really good advice for people who are undisciplined and people who just don't manage their finances properly. However, if you educate yourself on personal finance subjects and you get disciplined with your spending and your budgeting and you start to manage your money well, then debt can actually be a tool to create wealth for you. Now, this advice that you get is probably just opinionated because some people believe that you should never use your own money to invest or to start your own business and they believe that you should always use the bank money or borrow money to invest and start your own business and you should always use debt. On the other hand, there are some people that believe that you should never go into debt to start a business. They believe that you should save the money first and then use the money that you've saved to start that business or to invest in anything you want to invest in. Now, this is actually good if you can manage your money. I'll give you guys an example. So for instance, I have a small business and let's say my small business is making me only $1,000 per week, but I have a really good product or service and I know that if I get exposed to more people who are interested in my niche or my products or services, I'll make a lot more sales and I'll make a lot more money from this small business. So because of this, I decide to invest and I decide to pay for Google ads and Facebook ads so that I can reach more people. So to pay for a professional to create an ad for me, video ads, text ads, and then to pay for my ad campaigns on both Google and Facebook, let's say it's going to cost me a couple thousand dollars. The total cost is going to be $5,000. Right here, I have a problem. I don't have $5,000 and my business only makes me $1,000 per week, so I have two options here. I can save all the money that I make over the next five weeks and hope that I make $5,000 or $1,000 every single week. It doesn't go below, and I can save to pay for this ad campaign after paying for my bills or any costs or any expenses that my small business has. However, I could get a business credit card for my small business, and I could educate myself on how credit cards work, and then, I would realize that going into debt doesn't have to cost me anything here. So I could wait until the statement date and then the day after the statement date, I could put that $5,000 or the total cost of $5,000 on the business credit card and then I'd have an entire month before a new statement comes for that credit card. And then even when the new statement comes for that credit card, I'll still have around 20 days from the date of the new statement to be able to pay that credit card bill off without having to pay any interest or to be charged any interest payments. So this way I'm actually getting roughly six weeks to pay down my debt without getting charged any interest. Now, if I didn't know about credit cards or I wasn't educated on how credit cards work, then I wouldn't be able to do this because I just wouldn't know that that could work. So I'd save the money for five or six weeks to be able to pay for this ad campaign. However, if I use the credit card and I use debt, I could get this done in probably just two to three days and I could start making more money right now instead of two months from now. And that way I could pay the debt off and I made more money quickly by using debt as a tool. Now, obviously you're not very disciplined or if you're not very disciplined and you don't manage your finances well, then you can do the same thing and then you can skip making your payments and then you'll fall into the monthly minimum payment traps and then you'll start getting charged interest payments and that's going to cost you a lot. So right here, this rule only makes sense if you cannot manage your finances and you're very undisciplined because if you are disciplined and you manage your money well and you are educated about how money works and how credit cards and other debt works, then debt is actually going to be a very good tool for you to use in almost any situation. So the rule that debt is completely bad and you should never get into credit card debt 
personal loan debt, mortgage debt, and every other debt is just a myth. Instead, it depends on you. Now, another myth that I want to cover here is the myth that there are some safe havens that you can take to protect your money, and actually, I believe that this is false. Now, some people will tell you that investing in the stock market is a safe haven, or investing in gold and precious metals is a safe haven, or even real estate is a safe haven, but the thing is, all these investments can, will, and have already lost value at some point in time, and they all go through the same cycle of ups and downs. I mean, if you think about it, having a safe haven should be something that protects you during a financial crisis where you can keep or you can store your valuables, which is really just money. However, the only true safe haven is actually cash, because if you put your money in the stock market and the economy goes down, then stocks are going to go down in value and the value of that money is going to go down as well. The same thing is going to happen with crypto and Bitcoin. It's a very volatile or it's very volatile and there are ups and downs. And so if you store your money, they're thinking that that's a safe haven. Wherever you actually want access to that money, it may not be the right time and possibly you'd have to pull your money out from crypto when crypto prices go down. Now, people also say that gold and other precious metals are a safe haven. If you look at the charts of gold for the past 30 years, it hasn't always steadily gone up. It's gone up and it's gone down and it also fluctuates a lot. So this is another myth and the only true safe haven that you can actually have for any crisis is actually cash in the bank because if there's any financial disturbances or you have any financial distress, the only thing that can and will help you readily is cash. Cash is actually king. Cash is still king and cash is what you will need in any type of crisis. So the only safe haven that you should be working on is getting an emergency fund and padding that emergency fund where you have so much cash on hand that you can live and survive for months without having to worry about your investments falling down in value, your crypto and Bitcoin going down in value, your precious metals going down in value, or your home or other real estate properties going down in value. And these things are also not liquid. You'd have to sell them to get cash. So I think that cash is king and cash is the only thing that is actually liquid where you can grab it and use it when you need it. Now, this brings us to the next personal finance myth, and this is that everyone should be investing and specifically investing in the stock market. And I know I personally on this channel, I talk a lot about the stock market and investing in the stock market. And while anyone can now get into investing in the stock market in 2021 very easily, I don't think that investing in the stock market is for everyone, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Now, I know for a fact that there are lots of people who day trade stocks and they day trade not because they want to make money, but because it's fun. And yes, people actually day trade because it's fun. It's like a game to them. Similar to gambling where people will go to the slot machine or the casino and they'll put money in knowing that they may never see that money again, but they like doing it and they get enjoyment from doing that. And so people do the same thing with day trading. They do it for fun, even if they lose money. In fact, only 1.6% of all day traders are profitable every single year. However, although it's only 1.6% of the day traders that are profitable every single year, they account for more than 10% of all day trading activity. So you have a very small, very small fraction of day traders that are profitable every single year, but they are very active in what they do. And so the other 98.4% or thereabout of day traders are either doing it and losing money or they're just doing it for fun. Also, if you're investing and you're in a lot of debt, I don't think it makes a lot of sense because if you try to invest, let's say $100 per week, but you have credit card debt and student loan debt, then all the interest payments that you're making on those debts are going to outweigh any gains that you could possibly get in the stock market from investing. So I don't think that if you're in a lot of debt, you should be investing. Investing for everyone is a myth and you'll definitely not or you should not be investing if you're in a lot of debt and it's not something that should be pushed to everyone. Your money would do more for you if you were to pay down your debt or something else like starting a business. If you're trying to make money in the stock market or any significant amount of money in the stock market, it's going to take years and a lot of investments, thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars just to make any significant gains in the stock market. So if you have $5,000 or $10,000 right now and that's only or that's the only money you have, then you'd probably be much better off putting that money in a micro business that costs roughly three dollars to $5,000 
or multiple micro businesses, which will then make you more money than investing that money because the rate of return on starting a micro or a small business is going to be much higher than just investing or any investments that you could possibly take on with that amount of money. So people should invest and this depends on where you are and if you want to diversify where you put your money. So for example, if you invest in the S&P 500, which gives you 10% in returns on average per year and you put $10,000 in this and then next year you get 10%, you'll have $11,000. And then yes, you made $1,000, but that's not a lot of money. If you were to put that $10,000 in a small online business, you could have easily turned that 10K into at least 30K in a year. So the point is investing is actually not for everyone. And if you have a limited amount of money, then you should work on increasing your income before you actually start diving and dumping lots of money into the stock market or any other investments because you're better off starting a business and you'll get much more returns from starting a business than investing your money in stocks. Now, there's another myth that I want to mention here, and this is the myth that money is bad. Having a lot of money is bad and if you have a lot of money then you're an evil person and you probably did bad things to get your wealth. Now this is somewhat true because there are lots of people who got their wealth from doing bad or morally wrong things depending on how you want to look at it. But in 2021 that doesn't have to be the case. You can go and sell drugs if you want to and you can probably make a lot of money very quickly. You can also start an online business for three to five thousand dollars. You can start multiple online businesses and you can make a lot of money very quickly just the same. Also, there's the myth that money is bad and it makes you a bad person and this is just not true. When people get money, they always do the same things that they've always wanted to do. So if money is no longer an obstacle, then you're going to do what you wanted to do. So if that was traveling the world, then you're going to travel the world because money is no longer an obstacle. If you always wanted to start a business just to rip people off, but you didn't have the capital to do it, then if money is no longer an obstacle, then you're going to start that business and you're going to rip people off because that's what you wanted to do in the first place. So money just really helps you to do what you've always wanted to do. So if you were a bad person before you had money, then you're just going to be an awful person after money is no longer an obstacle and if you were a very good person before then that's only going to be magnified as well also you shouldn't be afraid of making more money because you'll probably hear that saying that money isn't all and money won't bring happiness which is true to some extent but we can't ignore the fact that money pays the bills and also funds the lifestyle whether that's a lifestyle of luxury or even a modest lifestyle we all need money so having more money is more of an insurance policy in my opinion and I do not think that money is bad. I do not think that people who have money are evil and I do not think that people who have a lot of money have done bad things to get their wealth. Now the next myth on the list is that you shouldn't save with small amounts or that it doesn't make any sense. I hear this a lot when I tell people about investing and they'll usually say, Ian, I like how you talk about investing, it sounds really good, but I don't want to invest because all I really have is $50 or $100 to invest per week and that's not a lot of money to save or invest. And a lot of people think this way and it prevents them from starting to save or investing. And when I say invest, it doesn't necessarily mean investing in the stock market. It could be saving to invest in their own small business or something else that makes them more money on the side. Now, this is completely wrong. If you don't start saving with a small amount, then you'll never actually start saving when you have more money. This is why a lot of people who are rappers or actors or athletes, they make a lot of money very quickly, but then they fall off and then they lose a lot of money. And in the end, they'll end up being broke because they never developed the good habits that they needed, which was to save money. Now, I've probably mentioned this before in a lot of my videos, but when I started investing, I started with around $10 per week. Investing $10 per week isn't going to change my life or wouldn't have, but it was the good habits that were developed by saving and investing consistently. And every time I was able to cut back on some expenses or I had more money to invest or save or my income went up, I would invest more money. So I started at around $10 per week and then I went to $20 per week and then $50 per week and then $100 per week. And I kept going and I kept increasing the amount of money I saved or invested and I developed good habits to save and invest. So no matter how much money I end up making in the future, I'll always be consistently saving and investing all because of the good habits that were created before. So similarly, if all you can save is a dollar per month, you should get into the habit of saving. 
Now I know that saving may be boring, so a very good way of getting into this is to try the 52 week challenge. And I have a video about the 52 week challenge on this channel. You guys can go ahead and watch that video. And in that video, it will explain how you can start with saving one single dollar per week. And then every week you'll increase that amount of money and keep going. And at the end of 52 weeks, you'll have a couple thousand dollars saved just by starting with one dollar per week. So be sure to check that video out as well if you haven't already seen it. Now, the next myth on this list is that you should avoid risk at all costs. And I think this is very wrong. If you don't risk it or you're afraid of failure, then the chances of you being successful are going to be very slim because the risk in every single thing that you're going to try to do to make money. There's a risk of you losing all the money you've invested. There's a risk of you just wasting all the time that you've invested into that business. The same as with any investment that you take on. However, if you don't risk it, then you can't get a reward. So even if you risk it and you fall or you fail, then it's not the end of the world. Most people who are successful never started one business or the first investment that they made just made them successful right off the rip. Actually, they had a lot of failures. They wasted a lot of time or they invested a lot of time that didn't pay off. They invested a lot of their own money. They probably went into debt to try different businesses and they all failed. However, if you keep risking it, you will eventually find something. And remember guys, it only takes one. You only need to find one business that works for you. You just need to find one investment that works for you. You could spend a thousand dollars every single month for an entire year trying a new business and they all don't work and you wasted 12 months and you also wasted $12,000. But if on the 13th month and on the $13,000 you spent, you found that that business worked for you, then that could quickly erase all your losses, make you profitable and all the failures and risks that you took before would now be worth it. For example, if you're trying to start a business, everybody is going to tell you, I'm sure everybody is going to tell you off the amount of people that are already doing that business. The amount of failures and the fact that 90% of businesses fail in the first five years. Now, this is all true and facts, but if you live your life in fear and fear of risks and failure, then you won't ever be successful because you won't do what it takes to be successful. Another example that you guys may be able to relate to more is me creating this YouTube channel over two years ago. So I created the channel and I was recording and posting videos every single day. No one was watching these videos. I was investing a lot of time. Each video that I post on this channel takes at least at the very minimum four hours to make. That's the minimum. Sometimes they take up to two days to make. Now, there are a lot of people who have YouTube channels and they're also not getting any views and they're not very successful on YouTube. And so before I started this video two years ago or this channel two years ago, I could have looked at YouTube. I could have looked at some of these content creators and I could have said, well, you know, the majority of YouTubers aren't really successful because they never grow an audience and sometimes they just end up quitting. And so I could have just scrapped this entire idea and never tried YouTube, but I did. I risked it. I invested my money. I bought a camera. I bought audio recording equipment. I invested a lot of my time. I made videos from Sunday to Sunday, every single day, every single week, every single month. It took me about six months of making videos, which is 180 days every single day before I actually started getting views on this channel. So similarly, if you never risk it, then you can't be successful in anything in the first place. So don't be afraid of risk and don't be afraid of failure. And in this same example, if after a year, no one watched any of my videos, then I probably would have stopped doing YouTube. However, the point here is that at least at that point in time, I would know that, okay, well, I did it. I did my best. I took the risk. I invested and I gave it my all and it just didn't work. And so that's not for me. And I would have moved on to something else instead of just living in fear and not just doing anything. So the main point is try things and take a risk. And if they don't work out, then they just don't work for you. And you know that you should move on to the next thing. And that way you don't waste any of your time and you'll find that one opportunity or that one niche that you'll be successful in much faster. And then that way you can capitalize on what makes you money or what you're going to be successful in sooner than later. Now, the next personal finance myth is one that I talk about a lot here on this channel as well, and this is penny pinching. So for example, I'll say to you guys that you should always be on a budget and you should stop buying Starbucks coffee and you should stop purchasing uh, bottled water and you should stop using the vending machine. And these things are all good if you're in a lot of debt and you really don't have a lot of money and you need to pay off some debt. 
However, when you think about it, if your goal is to build wealth, then by simply not buying Starbucks coffee and by not buying bottled water and by not shopping at the vending machine anymore, that's actually not going to create any significant wealth for you. Sure, it's going to save you $10, $20, $30 here. Maybe you'll save $100, $200, or $300 per month. But the only thing that's going to help you to make more money is to create more income. So while you can live below your means, saving a couple dollars here and there and penny pinching isn't going to help you to build a lot of wealth. Instead of focusing all your time and efforts in building or budgeting, which is important, of course, instead, put more time on focusing on how to make more money. Penny pinching won't make you wealthy. Now, with that said, the final personal finance myth is that you can just live your life and all you have to do is to spend less than what you earn and you'll be fine and that is a myth. If you do not have a budget, if you do not track your expenses, if you do not know where your money is going, then you won't ever be able to properly manage your money and by simply just spending less than you earn, you're not going to build any significant amounts of wealth. You need to know how much money you make, you need to have a strategy, you need to have a plan on how much you're investing, on how much you're saving, on how much you're spending on things that you want, and you need to have a financial plan for yourself. This way you can create financial goals and you can keep yourself and your life aligned with your financial goals, and that means that you'll always reach your financial goals in the time that you set to reach those goals. So very quickly guys, I just had some personal finance myths that I wanted to talk about in this video, especially since yesterday I talked about 10 personal finance rules and I just wanted to make the point that these rules really depend on how you plan to live and also where you are in your financial journey right now. So comment below and let me know if you found any of these financial myths in particular very valuable. And if you like the content, hit the like button, give this video a thumbs up, I'll really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, turn on all the notifications, and that way you'll never miss the updates of when I post new videos on this channel, which is every single day. Also, check the links down below in the description for free and helpful stuff. And I will see you guys tomorrow in the next one.